Hello and welcome to another episode of Hoinoi TV. This one is going to be a little bit different. It's about building vivariums, terrariums. Basically putting live plants and maybe a couple of invertebrate animals in various vessels for display purposes and human enjoyment. Join me as I put together two of these bad boys. Let's get into it. Check this out. I didn't think I was gonna film this, but I think it's gonna come together in a big way. So I decided I better get out the phone, start recording. I recently found this giant winemaking vessel, which is called a carboy. Very big stuff. Uh, not perfectly clear glass, not super high quality glass, but it's a big vessel and it has a cork top and it's used for making wine generally. It's called a carboy, which is a weird name. Uh, what I've done is I've done about two inches of pea gravel in the bottom. Then I had some old uh, window screen lying around and I cut that into a circle, rolled it up and dropped it in and it unfolded perfectly, just like a ship in a bottle kind of situation. Okay, we don't have perfect coverage, but not a big deal. It's gonna separate the top soil, uh, the soil substrate layer that I put on top from the pebble layer, which is gonna act as kind of a water table and drainage layer to keep things from getting too too soaked for too long and creating issues with fungus and mold. I tried to MacGyver a appropriate funnel, but I couldn't do it, so I had to just form all the substrate into like little turd logs with my hands and push them through the hole, but we're looking good in there. Cocoa husk, cocoa core, worm castings, all organic, right on top of our drainage layer. So I guess the next step uh, is to add the plants. I also want to say that I use gravity and my muscles to shake the thing and kind of push uh, the, the and to kind of push the substrate back to the far side so that we get a downward slope that makes the uh, front facing side of the carboy have the best presentation. Next issue is how the heck do I place plants in here with any kind of intentionality? Like it's gonna be a free for all, I guess. I don't expect this to look great coming out, but hopefully plants take and grow and naturally kind of move themselves and, and spread out within the terrarium to make something really beautiful. But I think it's gonna take some time. So to work with today, we have a little bit of wild collected moss. We have some royal fern, wild collected, really cool stuff. Uh, more moss. And then I have some, uh, I don't know, classic. Jurassic Park fern type action. I had to break the moss into very small pieces to get it in there and once I dropped it in it was basically a free-for-all. Also noticing of course a lot of the pieces I dropped in have congregated at the end that is lower as opposed to the top of the substrate uh, mound or hill. A little bit of mesh showing there. I'm gonna have to cover that up. Ah uh, yeah this is proving very difficult. Ship in a bottle type stuff but uh, I'm gonna keep tinkering away and see what I can and see what I can create. All right, all right. So I just kamikaze those in there, and uh, then I was able to kind of push them around with a single long piece of bamboo that I have. And some of them aren't standing upright, but you know that'll change as they grow towards the light. And some of them are standing upright, which I'm really excited about. So those are my royal ferns. They're kind of uh, shorter. Then we have these big tall boys. Uh, whose bases are just a bit too thick for me to get through the top of the bottle, so I'm gonna have to break them down even further, which I'm worried about because they don't like to be manhandled and we're probably gonna see a die off, but uh, in a matter of weeks or months, in a, but in a matter, but in a matter of weeks or months, we should see it come right back and that'll be really exciting. So after a lot of breaking things into smaller pieces and poking them with a piece of bamboo, I officially have a big mess of living ferns and mosses in a carboy. Not everything is standing up straight, I just couldn't make it happen. Some of the moss you can see is legitimately sideways or completely upside down and I don't think it'll make it, but I just can't seem to get it upright and you know if it breaks down and adds to the nutrition of the substrate that's fine too. This thing is really gonna have to come into its own and do its own thing. I do plan to put the cork on it to seal it and make it a closed ecosystem, as in the entire gas exchange uh, system will be localized within the carboy. 
uh, I won't be letting the air in. It'll be recycling its own oxygen and carbon dioxide. Okay, so my back is hurting and my face is sweating, but I officially have a big old mess of ferns and moss inside the carboy here. Looking very jungly. Obviously, you can see not everything is standing upright. Not every piece of moss is flat to the ground. Some of it is sideways with root structure exposed or completely upside down. Tried to fix as much as I could, but there's only so much you can do with a stick. Uh, on the whole, this is looking pretty sweet. Since not everything is planted like you would in a garden or even in a, a traditional vivarium or terrarium, not everything's gonna take, and we are gonna see some dieback, but I am emotionally prepared for that, and I hope you are as well. This is gonna be a closed system. We're gonna put the cork on here. We're gonna see precipitation. We're gonna see gas exchange, uh, and just like a, a full-on uh, plant and animal life cycle. I'm gonna be adding isopods first, and then if things work out, we'll add some of my giant North American millipedes, Narcissus americanus. All right, you guys, so I gave it a good uh, spray down inside to clear the glass, and there's a lot of water spots here, which will clear up in time. Hopefully they don't leave little ghosty water spots, uh, but at the end of the day, this is a very mottled, if that's the word, glass. It's just not a super high quality uh, blow job. Sorry for using that word. Uh, <laughs> but you can still see the plants. And here it is, little bricks of beautiful green moss that I was able to shove down the top there and sort of reposition. And hopefully over time they do in fact reposition themselves and we get a full carpet of moss. That's the dream here. Uh, two different types of fern, very good looking stuff. I know that some of these are gonna shrivel away in the coming days and weeks and I hate it. Check it out in there, it's like a real a real wetland, a real Canadian marsh situation. So we'll put a we'll put a snapping turtle and a couple of ducks in here. Gather some wild beaver eggs and see if we can't just make a little bit of a maybe we can make the world's smallest national park. Okay, so since I have some plants left over and some cocoa fiber left over, I recently picked up this five gallon at Value Village for just a couple of dollars. We've got a layer of pea gravel. We've got a layer of window mesh and we've got a layer of downward sloping cocoa fiber. Let's see what we can make this into. All right, you guys, check it out. We've got, we've got a carpet of beautiful green moss. Uh, I forget what these things are, like crocuses or something, coming through the moss, our royal ferns, another type of moss here. Looking good, a little bit of leaf litter to cover up the bare spots and also for the isopods to hide under. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a screen top for this, and I want to hold more humidity than a screen top would allow. So I'm gonna be putting these two pieces of slate tile. That's gonna be really ugly, but it is gonna keep that water trapped inside and also keep my isopods from escaping because they are excellent climbers, and while they can't climb glass, they, I tried it before, they can, of course, climb up the plants like this, reach the rim, and the next thing you know, they're dead on my kitchen floor and it breaks my heart. So I'm just gonna add some of those boys now and uh, give it a little mist and that'll be, that'll be it for this micro project. All right, let me talk turkey with you for a hot minute. This is what I currently keep my locally sourced plain black vulgaris isopods in. It is a little Dollarama flat boy with some holes poked in the top. They get natural potting soil, pieces of wood, uh, oak leaves, which is they love. I also found some uh, I think squirrel bones or maybe a cat vertebra here. This I think this is a pelvis. I just put some bones in there because I found them when I was sourcing the millipedes and I thought they were cool. So we're definitely going to transfer these over to the new thing. And some of this is uh, fluorite, which is what you get in potting soil. It's a type of volcanic rock. But a lot of this is isopod shells from them molting. We are loaded here with baby isopods and springtails. The big boys look like this, of course. Very cool little guys, and they are breeding like mad. Look at all of those. Now these guys do a great job uh, in any terrarium, vivarium that you might have with, uh, oh, there's a couple of baby millipedes in here too. Terrarium, vivarium, cleaning up, uh, anything bad that might grow like a fungus and also the poop that's left behind by your gecko or whatever you have in there, frog, or even just, you know, it's good for houseplants. 
this is actually pretty cool. I put uh, some of my snakes shed skin in here and they eat all of it. They love it. It's pure protein and this is just the belly scutes, the really hard uh, approaching like fingernail like uh, bottom scales on the belly and they just can't get through that. But there's of course webbing between there and there was a whole big chunk of snake skin like this long and it is gone. It's straight gone. So. Uh, something I highly recommend to other keepers, if you have snakes and you have a cleanup crew, whether it's millipedes, isopods, or whatever, chuck your snake sheds in there. You're not doing anything else with them. And uh, it's, it's free food. All right, all right. So, the isopods are in. The springtails are in. You can see one brave boy here, but 99.9% .9 of them have hidden themselves away. As they get more confidence, they are going to be coming out, climbing around, and munching on stuff. And I'm excited to see it. Uh, only thing left now is to put those big ugly hunks of tile on. Uh, and the idea is twofold. It's something I had lying around the house, but it also is going to hold in humidity. And it's also opaque, so uh, we're not going to cook these low light plants. It's going to provide kind of a canopy. So I guess that's threefold. But anyway, let's do it. So there you have it. They've been upgraded from this to this bad boy right here. And I think they're gonna love it. All right, you guys, that was it. That was the initial build of two different little vivariums. One that's quite unique in that it's kind of a ship in the bottle situation where I had to fit everything through a very small hole. And then once it's in there, there wasn't a whole lot I could do to manipulate it. So however it comes out is gonna have more to do with how the plants choose to grow than how I chose to design it. Uh, the other one, that's not the case. It's very much scaped by me, and I think it looks great. Hopefully all those plants survive. We will check back in on both of these things and see how they're doing in a couple of weeks or months, so stay tuned for that. Lastly, I'd really like to hear from you guys about what you thought of this content. Do you want me to just keep handling snakes all the time, or did you think this was interesting as well? I watch a lot of this type of content on YouTube, and it's something I've been having fun with here and there for many years. Oh, I got a customer, I gotta go. Anyway, this is the end of the video. Stay tuned for more. Be sure you're subscribed and uh, leave me a comment. Like I said, I love you, goodbye.